Imagine yourself. You have to flee your home one day from disaster, danger, or maybe war. Could happen, right? And you have nowhere to go. What will you do? I'm here today to share with you my personal experience and leave you with the idea that the world we choose has to reflect the action we take, how we can empower our voices. I'm here today to plant the seed in your heart and mine, the seed of hope. In order for that seed to grow, we must use our powerful voices. I was born and raised in Damascus, Syria. The country was so beautiful, peaceful, and safe. My neighbor, they were Sunni, Shia, Muslim, Christian, all kind of religion and culture. We all live together. We all respect each other. I immigrated to Canada 26 years ago. I'm like every one of you. I like to be with my friend. I love to travel. I like to cook the meal to my family. Life was great. In 2011, the war started in Syria. We all watched the news coverage, and we saw thousands of people fleeing their home from our comfortable TV room. And we all were silent. Some of those people, they were my own family. Two brothers, three sisters, and their family. They flee to Turkey. I did what every one of you will do to their own family to help. I sent them money. I googled different organizations. They were set up to help the refugee over there to help them. For a few years, I phoned them every single day, hearing their struggle. I could not understand why they're not getting the help they needed. In 2014, I decided to go to Turkey to try to help my family. And what I saw and experienced is not what we all watch in the news. It was worse than I could ever imagine. It was not just my own family who needed help. I saw thousands of my people on the street without home to go to. Children were hungry, bugging for a piece of bread. I heard so many tragic stories from those people on the street. A heartbreaking story. My family, they were lucky they have a place to live, but they slept in the cement floor because I paid their rent. I know I have to do something to help my family. One day, I took my niece and nephew by hand and we start walking by the neighborhood. I knock in each door. I do not speak their language, but I pointed to the children, and I told them they are Syrian refugees and they needed your help. Door after door, they were slammed shut in my face, and it was the hardest thing I ever did in my life, bugging for help. I didn't know what else to do. We returned home. 24 hours later, a truck show up, full of blanket, pillow, toys, clothes. Even though the neighbor did not understand me, but they heard me. It was my, my last day to return back here to Canada, and I did not get to see all my family. My sister-in-law and my two nephew. They were stuck in a closed border trying to enter Turkey after they flee Kobani when ISIS invaded. They were 12 hours away where, from where I was. I did not get to see them. 
but I did not know I will never see them again. I returned back here to Canada to my lovely home, beautiful furniture. Watch the people, the children, how they live, crying for their next iPad. And I thought to my mind how lucky we are to live in this beautiful country. I decided to help my family to bring them to Canada as a refugee. For a few months, every single day, every organization you can think of, I can tag them. Lots of phone calls, lots of emails. But my voice was not heard. Our border, they were closed. Our system was set up to fail. I have to break the news to my own family that I cannot bring you to Canada unless something will change. Give me some time. But the time has run out. Desperate for their own family. My brother Abdullah and his wife Rihani, like thousands of people were doing it. They decided to take a risk, trust the smuggler, cross the Mediterranean. They thought they would go somewhere would mean freedom, safety, and hope. In September the 2nd, in 2015, I heard that tragic news that my sister-in-law, Rihani, and my two nephews, Ghalib and Alan Kurdi, have drowned. I will never forget that moment when I found out about their death. I remember I fall on the floor and I scream as loud as I could. I want the world to hear me. Why now? Why them? So many innocent people have died in this war and we all were silent. The image of Alan Kurdi, the boy on the beach, was all over the media across the world. In the, the, that same day, from my first phone call with my brother Abdullah, the father who lost his entire family, cried to me. And he said, the picture of my son is the wake up call to the world. It's the message from God to tell us enough suffering enough people drowning. Sadly, our tragedy is one of many. I had two choices. Stay home and continue to cry and feel there is nothing I could do or say can it change anything or bring my family back. Or step out to the world and add my voice. Out of my pain, the string was given to my heart, and I found my voice. And I decided to speak up on behalf of all those suffering people who does not have a voice. And most importantly, for my nephew, the boy on the beach, whose voice will never be heard. And I said, if I couldn't save my own family, Let's save the others. I spoke to media, not just here in Canada, but globally. I went to Brussels to tell the world about that any humanity was happening, that my people are innocent victims. They flee by force, not by choice. 
Open your heart, open your border, and end the war. They all listened to my voice, and they heard me. And they said, this tragedy will be the last. Finally, borders were open. Refugee brought to Canada. It took a tragedy for my voice to be heard. It took one picture, the picture of that boy on the beach, to move us to be human. Two years later today, I'm standing in front of you. People all over the world are still suffering, and they needed our help. And it's getting worse, not any better. Every time my brother see the news and see those people still taking the risk and drowning, mostly children, he will tell me, how can I move on in my life? And I still watch those desperate people are drowning. I was one of them. I understand them. I can see my family. Why only the poor who suffer the most? The world is not fair. We cannot close our eyes and turn our back and walk away from them. People are people no matter where we come from. We all won. The picture of that boy on the beach is the gift to us. It has been honored in many countries and turned into memorial as a statues, painter, and a bronze. So we do not forget and we do not go silent. We are lucky, we are safe. But from those tragedy, lesson can be, can be learned. Seed can be planted and grow. Life can be saved and you can be part of it and your voice can be heard. If I can ask one of you today, maybe 10 of you, to find your courage and connect to a tragedy in your life, maybe personal, may not be, the way I connect to mine. If I can plant that seed in your heart today, so we all work together and share idea to find a peaceful solution and help those desperate people and end the crisis everywhere. Tomorrow will be better. Empower yourself. Let's put our voice together and urge our government to tell the world leader to sit down on a table and find the political solution and focus on the root cause those people to flee their home urgently. Let's move forward. Spread the love and take action today for a better world tomorrow. I hope I have planted the seed in your heart today and ask you to stand up and add your voice to mine and be counted. Please don't be silent. I have a mission ahead of me. Will you join me? Thank you.